So the question says, uh, basketball player shoots towards the basket. Okay, let me start diagramming this. Um, so some distance away and some height above the floor. Okay, so uh, let me... I, I like to doodle as I read the question just so that I can just so that I can see if it feels like I have all the necessary information. Sometimes it looks like something's missing and so I have a ball that's getting launched or someone's shooting it. And the question is describing a target that's some distance D away horizontally and some height h above the point where i'm oh no wait above the floor okay <laughs> that's one of the reasons to diagram it to make sure i correctly understood the question so height above the floor um, so that's gonna be where my hoop is at um, if the yeah if the ball is released uh, let me label this with a small h or actually let me use the release some initial position why not above the floor and on so this is the initial position of the ball why not uh, above the floor at an angle uh, oh i'm given the angle angle theta of the horizontal that would be this angle here uh, what must the initial speed be okay so that initial speed do we not is what they're asking for if we were to go through the basket and there's a kind of a complication you know if you play basketball uh, not every ball that hits the basket actually goes through it um, actually has to go through a correct angle to be able to make it through the hoop um, we are going to ignore that for the purpose of answering this question uh, we are going to say for the purpose of being able to answer the question uh, if the speed is such that the ball will intersect with the basket that will assume that it'll actually make it through um, it's kind of a simplifying assumption we have to make so that we can actually do the question <laughs> otherwise it, you know it's a, one of the skills that you have to learn as a physicist and engineer to uh, uh, simplify the problem enough that it's doable so okay it's uh, looking like a projectile motion question so so i'll handle it like a projectile motion question uh, when you're dealing with a projectile motion question it's uh, often useful to have kinematic equations that describe the the x and y component of motion so um so the I'm defining my axis the usual way. Uh, let me say that this is my y equals zero. So this is my x-axis, and let me just call this my uh, x-axis, <laughs> and x equals zero. Um, this is my, so that's my y-axis. Um, so with that axis in mind, the x position of the ball is a function of time. For a projectile motion, the horizontal acceleration is zero. So I can say it's the horizontal component of initial velocity times time. That'll give me the, the x position of the ball. And technically, there's an initial x naught, but I'm to make my equation simple, I'm having it start at x equals zero. So I, I'm not going to write that down superfluously. Um, and, and and it's often useful to have a description of the vertical component of motion. So with the vertical component of motion, I remember there's a downward acceleration at minus g. So with that, the kinematics equation that describes the vertical component of motion is the one half acceleration. So minus one half g times time squared plus the part that corresponds to this, that's the initial y component of velocity times the time, uh, plus, and here I actually need the initial y position, plus y not. And the reason it's often useful to write down these two expressions, uh, equations, is um, very often what, um, what makes a projectile motion solvable is the fact that these two 
uh, independent motions happen at the same time. So they are independent and they are related through sharing the common time variable. So, so that's what I'm going to be using. And, um, and I described the general physics problem solving strategy earlier. Your first step is you, you find all the necessary pieces of information by which we mean writing down enough number of equations so that you, um, um, so that you have same number of equations as your unknowns. And, um, and once you verify that you have the same number of equations as your unknowns, then you are ready to go through the math and uh, finish uh, everything. So here, um, I have a one big unknown, um, my initial speed, which is not even in any of my equations. So I think I have some uh, initial steps to do because it comes down to, I have written down my equation in terms of the initial X component and initial Y component. And I have to first uh, express those in terms of my initial speed. So let me just draw a quick vector diagram. So if this is my initial speed of V0, and this is my given angle theta above horizontal, then this is my X component, this is my Y component. Remember the trigonometry opposite over adjacent, you know, so katwa. <laughs> so um, here I will be using so, here I'll be using ka. Um, so this mnemonic that you might remember from your geometry, trigonometry classes, uh, sine of this angle is opposite over adjacent. So uh, sine of theta is the opposite side over the adjacent side. We're solving for this opposite side. You get the opposite side of the triangle is the magnitude or the hypotenuse times the sine theta. And ka stands for cosine is adjacent, adjacent side of the angle over the hypotenuse. So cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side, initial x component over the hypotenuse. Um, or solving for the initial x component. Initial x component is going at cosine theta. So I have those. So I think with these expressions in mind, what I can say is that these, um, both of them together, count as one unknown. Um, and, uh, and so I have one unknown there. And let's see. Um, and I have a um, second unknown in the form of time. And I think this is where you have to be careful. Because, uh, let's see. I, I, well, <laughs> I mean not <laughs> over um, complicated. So, okay, time, that's one of the unknowns. Fine. <laughs> so I have two unknowns so far. Unknown v not unknown time. And, um, and I'm going to tell you that I have two more unknowns. Those two more unknowns are these, x as a function of time and y as a function of time. It might surprise you to hear me say that those are unknowns because didn't I just write down an equation for them? Well, they're unknown in the sense that, um, you know, if someone asks you, what is the value of x of t? You don't have a value. That's the sense in which it's unknown. Um, so in this question, you are given this as a function of time. And this is not actually the final form of equation you are using. You have to use these formulas to generate the equations that you will be using. So you have to plug in some particular value of time. Um, so as an example, at you, you can imagine plugging in time equals zero. So x, value of x at time equals zero, well, plug it in and you get zero. Yeah, that's my initial position. You can also imagine doing that y at uh, time equals zero would be uh, at y not, okay? I think I already knew that. <laughs> so, so, and that's one of the points on the trajectory. And you need a second point on the trajectory, which will hopefully give you what you need. And that's uh, this point here. Uh, 
So you have to imagine some time, let's call it T1, at which the ball reaches this point. And you have to plug that time in into this equation to come up with an equation where hopefully the only unknowns you will have are speeds and this time T1. And you will have two equations and two unknowns that you can solve for. So let me plug in that point to get those uh, two equations. So plugging in T1, I have, and so this T1 is uh, defined by the property that at the time T1, ball will have reached the distance of D from its starting point. So I actually know the X position at the time T1. So that will be D is equal to, um, let me just plug this in as I'm writing this down, V naught cosine theta times T1, some unknown time at which the ball is at this point. And let me write down, so this is my first equation, and let me write down the second equation that comes from the y component of motion. The height at time t1, I know that from the problem description here, it will be at height h. So h is equal to, let me write down the rest, minus 1 half g t1 squared plus oh, this v naught sine theta plus uh, y not oh I guess that's what I yeah, why not that's my equation too so now when you look at here so now the left hand side is known because it's in terms of the quantities that you are given and you still have your unknown speed parameter and the time before when I marked the time as an unknown it was kind of um it wasn't clear like at what time now it's clear it's this time t1 which is associated with this point so two unknowns, two equations, we should be able to solve it. And <laughs> this is the, uh, so this is the end of this step number one of the general physics problem solving strategy. And step number two is really just uh, um, going through this math. And I could do it, um, but I, oh wait, sorry, I forgot. Uh, there's a times t1 plus y not. Um, I could do it, but I get a feeling that, am I going to get quadratic equation? Oh, you're not, no, no, no. I, mm. Let me do it by hand. I, I think here I get some wonderful simplification and I don't have to solve for any quadratic formula. So, so I think, uh, let me just do it by hand. Uh, and I'll leave it some later time because uh, at some point I do want to uh, demonstrate Sage Math, which is uh, free and uh, quite useful um, uh, computer algebra system that can help you uh, work through very complicated, tedious math. But let me leave that for another time and just to do this by hand for now. So, um, so as I'm staring at these equations, what I'm looking at is my final goal. I want to solve for my speed at the very end. And what that means is in this system of two equations, time is the last thing, literally, the last thing I want to solve for. Uh, I want to be able to eliminate T1 first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the equation one and solve it for T1 so that I can eliminate T1 from my system of equations and hopefully solve for V0 in terms of all the known quantities. So solving equation one for T1, I get, I'm just dividing both sides by V0 cosine theta. Then I have D divided by V0 cosine theta. And this becomes my tool to plug into equation two and eliminate T1 from everywhere I see it. So uh, let me make some space here. So I'm gonna take equation two and plug in uh, what I, let me label this as one prime, plug in one prime into equation two. That'll give me H is equal to minus one half G. Okay, I need to plug in T1. So that'll be D over V naught cosine theta squared. Okay, that's a little bit scary. Let's keep going. Plus, uh, scary because I'm squaring and I like linear things. V naught sine theta times T1. Okay, D divided by V naught cosine theta. And here I'm seeing something I like. I can see that V naught's gonna cancel out here, which I think will be nice. 
plus y naught. So before I move, keep um, it's always useful to simplify as you go. So I see things that's gonna cancel out. So let me cancel them out now so that I can see the kind of simplification I'll get. Here's one uh, really nice thing here. I have all these basically constant terms and only one term that depends on v naught, which means I, if I, once I isolate this term, I can easily just solve for v naught and, um, and I, I can avoid having to use quadratic formula. I can just solve for v naught. So let me do that. Oh, I think I need to scroll down. Um, so, so I'm, my first goal is to just to put this term by itself. I think if I move this to the left to get rid of minus sign, move everything else to the right, I'll have done that. So let me first to do that. One half of G and this thing here, D divide by V naught cosine theta. Uh, let me uh, distribute as I'm doing that. <laughs> let me distribute this square so that it's a D squared divided by V naught squared divided by cosine squared theta. Is equal to everything else on the right. So it'll be d, and I'm going to simplify the sine theta over cosine theta. That's tangent theta. Uh, plus y naught. Oh, and I, as I move h over, it's a minus h. Okay, so I need to move this into numerator, and by itself, I squint at this equation for a bit and decide if I multiply this whole thing by this, I'll get what I want, which is um, V naught squared over um, the tangent theta plus Y naught minus H. So um, take a bit of time to make sure that that's what you want to do when you multiply by this. So on the left-hand side, I'll be canceling out V naught squared. That way, I don't have Vina squared in the denominator on the left hand side. Um, on the right hand side, I'll have Vina squared on the numerator. But I have all these things on the right hand side, which I don't want. That's why I'm dividing by this, so that this will cancel out of the right hand side. And on the denominator of left hand side, I'll have all this. And I think I can just plug in the numbers. So let me write out the simplified expression. I'm going to write the right hand side first. So I'll, that'll be Vina squared. V naught squared is equal to, and uh, what was my left hand side, which will be one half g d squared over cosine squared theta. That's what I had here. V naught squared having been cancelled times one divided by this thing I'm dividing d times tangent theta plus y naught minus h, and I guess it's possible to try to simplify this, but I think that's enough. It's enough for me to know that every single expression here has no numerical value. So at this point, I can actually plug just everything into calculator and um, get a number, take the square root to get V naught. So, so let me do it that way so that um, I've done the necessary bits of algebra and nothing that is not necessary. I just need to be able to see it as I'm using my calculator. Okay, so let me just plug in all the numbers. So 1 half, 0 0.5, times g, 9.8 meter per second squared, times uh, d, which is 5.3 meters squared, divided by, um, so cosine of theta squared. So I have to be careful here. I'm going to put in my angle first and make sure I'm on degree mode. Take the cosine, okay, and then square it. Okay, I think that looks right so far, okay. So that, um, the whole thing, divided by, I'm gonna open a parenthesis, and just to type this out, d, 5.3 times the tangent of theta, so that would be, again, 60 degrees, trigonometry tangent that looks right uh, plus the initial height 1.8 meters make sure units match minus uh, 3.0 meters hopefully when I close parenthesis good that's positive I don't want it to be negative um, and the, the way my calculator works I what it's displaying is this parenthesis value I have to press equal sign for it to do this last division so equals.
So 60. Eight point. Oh wait, that's the that's the speed squared. <laughs> that seemed way too high. That's like a, um, that's like hundred twenty miles per hour. <laughs> that's the squared value. So I need to take the square root. So eight point three one meter per second. That seems reasonable. So that's probably right. Eight point three one meter per second. And yeah. So so that's it. It um, yeah it. So in the incomplete version of the video, I think it took me 15 minutes to the partial version. So it took me 20 minutes to the complete version. So um, yeah, th this is the, I think in this question, the hardest part is uh, coming to this realization. That's uh, what you need to do to come up with your system of equations. And once you have that, the uh, math isn't all that challenging, although you know it's the kind of algebra practice that, um, that that I think people should work on getting so that it feels unchallenging. Um, 